And welcome back. Today we are flying out the SU-25K. And as you might have noticed, Gaijin bumped this thing up to 9.7 after, well, selling it for 6 hours straight. And then basically pissed off everyone in the process. A little bit of a dick move, but, you know, I can't really do anything about it. And neither can you. You're probably stuck with this thing now because it's not particularly amazing. It's not great in ground RB. It's not fantastic as a grinder. And it's, uh, well, it's not good in air RB either. I had good fun doing it, but I also didn't have to pay 60 bucks for this thing. Guns are great, missiles are good, R60 amps, and I am running, as you might be able to see, the gun poles in the outer pylons just to create a little bit more spread. And then I have these S250s in the middle pylons with a 1000 meter burst, so I can use them in the head-on. And if I don't need them, I can use the new feature, which is very helpful, especially with a plane like this. You can go into your controls, and you can go to jettison. Put it somewhere where you might not accidentally hit it, so I put it on my page up. So I'm not going to ever accidentally touch it. And for the differences between this thing as well as the normal SU-25, they are the exact same. However, this thing has double the flares. And this one has the nice pattern where they go like up and then to the side. Whereas this thing only shoots straight up. If you want to compare this thing directly to the A-10, they are very similar. That they are both not air-to-air -air fighters, not air superiority whatsoever. But the A-10, despite being worse on paper... Performs much better in air RB because you can fight everyone the same way. This thing has more options, but everyone also has options versus you. The A-10 is just slow. You can stamp on the elevator, you can spray your gun, you can spray your missiles all over the place. Just like that 10 kill 1v7 that I did in the A-10 like two patches ago. In this thing, I don't see it really happening. It's faster than the A-10, but this thing is a very hot target. And I'm talking about the engine, not about its looks. And if someone shoots a missile from behind, you're going to have a tough time flaring it, even if you drop your throttle. It's like you have a massive afterburn. It feels a bit like flying the F-14 in that sense. I have had people shoot their regular R-60s from like 2.5 to 3 kilometers in the head-on. And I was flying like 10 degrees off maybe. And they had no problem locking me. I flared it, I dodged it no problem. But the fact they can shoot it from that range at me already indicates that this thing is extremely hot. And if you are looking to buy this thing, which I don't exactly recommend, then feel free to use my referral link and you'll get a 3% discount. You're not going to get a decal just yet and you also won't get it retroactively. We are still designing it. Once it comes out, you'll have to repurchase. So if you are just looking for the decal, don't buy anything just yet. Otherwise, if you are looking to buy something, feel free to use it. Also, thank you to all my patrons. But without further ado, let's get right into the gameplay. And I did give you a little bit of a rundown on how this thing flies and how it feels but there are a few minute things that are pretty substantial in the end this thing overspeeds in a straight line yeah you heard that right these engines are pretty strong and your thrust away is pretty similar of that of a mig-15 the retention is good but keep in mind you are going to blow your wings off at like 0.88 mach the rip speed of this thing is pretty low it's pretty funny that it's so flimsy when it comes to air resistance because it's an absolute tank when it comes to damage. Very often you'll eat a missile and you'll just keep flying. You'll eat 30 mils of an A-10 and you will just keep flying. And other times of course you get one shot by a 50 cal. But that's just how what the risk. This thing is an absolute shit brick. When it comes to just forcing head-ons, being aggressive. And very often you have to take it. So it's nice that it kind of caters to that kind of gameplay. But I do have to say it's not a fighter aircraft. And you can tell it by the looks of it, by the designation, the hard points, basically everything. But again, the gun and the missiles, as well as the aimability of this vehicle, are pretty damn good. And this is why I run these rockets. Except this guy stole my pillbox. But you know, sometimes that happens. We are going head to head with an AV-8. And the AV-8 is something I can dogfight, as long as he doesn't know how to use the structure factory. If he doesn't use it, I will outturn him. And I'll probably out-energy him because he bleeds so much energy. The issue is, if he at one point finds his trust vectoring keys, I'm losing. I can't really run away from him. Luckily, most Harrier pilots do not know about that mechanic. For two coming in, he could very easily kill us here. But I have no real option other than try to dodge him. And I'm looking at the Harrier, he's flying away. So we go underneath his nose. He cannot nag V2 or nag is like an absolute will. It might have something to do with the fact that he's a massive bomber. And I will be flying out a new one very soon here. However, it's not looking very great right now. So I might wait for a little bit of an FM update. So we shoot him out of the air. We set him on fire. And now we want to make sure that we stay out of the nose of the V2. And then we start picking up a little bit of speed. Because right now, 
I'm gonna have an issue dodging this guy at low speed. He shoots both his missiles off. Very ambitious. I drop my throttle, I drop my flares, but he's already crit. And he's not doing particularly well. The issue is I'm pretty low on ammo here. So I need to make sure that I don't run out of it. So we hit him. We hit him again. We hit him again. And we are out. Luckily the last burst set him on fire. And that's going to be a nice little double kill for the end of that game. So the game after we are going to go basically straight in. And we are going to be looking around on who to engage. We see a Milan and I know I can dive on him and 100% kill that guy with an R60. But... That's going to get me killed in the long run. So instead I'm going to look for targets that are not really paying attention. The MiG-21 is going for someone else. And he is within range. So I'm just going to lob the missile off. And get him out of the match before he starts killing my team. There we go. MiG-21 down. Unfortunately he does also kill my MiG-17. That was just too late. And you can tell that the planes around us are all going to kill us in the dogfight. But because these J-35s and the MiG-21s actually have proper target prioritization they are not going for me yet which means that i have a little bit of breathing room and i can actually start looking around who to engage and i'm mainly gonna look at people that are contested by someone else so i can come in and clean their ass for them because that's what this thing is good at of course basically any plane can do that but when you are in a plane like this you kind of have to play with the cars you are dealt with so we are looking around and I notice there's a J-35 at altitude. There he is. He finally gets spotted again like clockwork. And because my missile is all aspect, I'm just going to pitch up for him. And I do this because a J-35 late game is going to absolutely ruin my life. Only a little bit. He's going supersonic. By the time I get my nose on, he's already like 0.9-ish away. And I don't really feel like risking it because I feel like that wouldn't have tracked him anyway. Or he would have just outran it. It might have hit him, but I'm going to save it for a little bit later. And now, in this kind of situation, the A-10 here is actually a pretty substantial target to go for. Because the A-10 is going to counter us completely late game. Because he basically does what we do, but in a different sense. We can't really kill him all than going head on with him. But right now he's busy with someone else, so I'm going to dive on him. And we are going to take a steal off. There we go. A-10 down. Again, look around, assess the situation and look who to go for. And I'm thinking about a J-25, but then I notice the MiG-21 is dogfighting on our left. And he's going awfully slow. And I'm, I have a feeling he's going to run away, but then I notice that he pulls in for my SU-25. So I'm going to prime a missile. Keep looking around, because I want to make sure that I can actually react to these people. Two kilometers, he's going slow, he's turning. Down he goes. He drops some flares, it's a 9B, it's not really that much of an issue. And we start heading into the direction of a MiG-21. And I'm going in this direction because he's on equal energy. And he's definitely a high priority target. This guy is an absolute top G. And I'm not really a fan of those, so I'm just going to dick slap him out of the air. Down goes Andrew Tate. And we are gonna do a 180 and go for the last guy in the J-35. And the J-35 here can single-handedly wipe all of us up. If you don't have any missiles left. He's gonna have a quite hard time killing us all. Right now, he just killed the Jack-38 and he has an SU-25 diving on him. I would maybe go RTB if this guy was alone here and he was just running away. But he's being triggered by someone else. And I know that the J-35 can very easily reverse this one SU-25. So I'm going to join the party. And then he's going to start turning. He's out of the guns of the first one. But doing so, he's going to turn right into the guns of me. That's the result for you. A bit quick, but if you want to see it, you can just pause it. But that's a game that might show this plane as pretty decent. And you see this Mirage in the background. You'll see more of him in, in a game later. But right now we're just cruising around. We're looking who to go for. And this is going to be more of your average game. F5 starts diving. I'm getting kind of spooked. But he doesn't see us. He's just going to dive past us. But for now I have a feeling that this Mirage is going to come for us. So I'm going to pitch up for him. I'm going to push a head-on. Because in the head-on I have the advantage. Especially with my missiles. It's a 3E unfortunately. So we actually have some flares. We just unleashed that shot. Very much a shame. Because that would have changed the outcome of this match quite substantially. And we're going to see if we can push after him. But he's already pre-flaring. It's not worth the R60. He's outrunning it pretty handily. He's probably just going to dodge it outright. Even without the flare. So I'm not going to bother with it. And I'm going to switch targets. Harrier here. Probably a GR1, because that's most of them nowadays. He's going straight up, and down he goes. Keep looking around, and you can start 
to see where this game is going. My team, well, they're doing about as well as Topper Harley over here. Not very well. And down he goes at skill number two. And now we start looking around and I get a Milan on a six. Not exactly ideal because right now I want to get speed to start engaging the people on the left. But we're now stuck in a dogfight so I'm gonna jettison my weapons. Look on the left wingtip. I just duplicated an R60. My dumbass had the wrong weapon selected and I didn't drop the rockets. Instead I dropped the missiles. Unlucky. I almost got a shot here but the Milan loses so much speed that the turn after he's already getting a shot again. So we dodged the shot. I'm waiting for my teammate to come in because I know he's right there. And I'm going to try to get out of his guns again. I go up and over. And he gets killed by the MiG-21 SMT. So we start diving out. One of the Koala guys, Hero of Kiev, dies. Crashes. Very fitting. And we start diving out. F5C is going for the MiG-21 above us. And very unfortunately speaking, he is not paying attention whatsoever. Luckily, these guys are also not paying attention. Harry are coming head on with us. Or Jaguar, sorry. We miss it. Very unlucky. That would have been a very easy shot. He goes up. Which means that if we follow this, we basically stall out for the F5C. But the F5C is doing a very passive loop. Very passive turn. I could have very easily done it. And maybe even gotten away with it. And then I noticed the Mirage. So I have to go for him. But he's not actually going for us. So that made me be in a very bad spot. We now start turning in. And I'm just too slow. No funny cut. There's just nothing I can do. I'm too slow. The, G the Jaguar actually crashes. Which is, uh, well, it is what it is. But that's what it's going to be like. You are forced to look at everyone at the same time. Because if you get anyone dead on your six, you are dying. There's just no ifs or buts about it. It maneuvers pretty decently. But because you have so little AOA. And you basically just... You are basically on rails. You're very easy to hit. And of course you're going to take a lot of hits and just tank everything. But at the end of the day, any damage is going to turn into more damage overall. Because they'll just get infinite shots. And I'm going a little bit faster than I thought. So the missile couldn't pull in. A little bit unlucky. But at the end of the day, that might be the reason this game was actually somewhat interesting. So we gun down the Mirage. And again, we start looking around. The Harrier is now chasing us. Want to make sure that we don't get SRAMed. And very often, SRAMs don't render. So you just want to pre-flare. I don't want to have anything to do with those. So instead, we pull head on with the F104. We miss. But he also misses, so it's completely okay. Where did the Harrier go? I am completely lost at this point. I am completely lost. As you can tell. All these AI around. I can't tell who is who. F on the 4 comes in. So instead I'll just start focusing on him. We go up and over. We prime the missile. And it's an F on the 4A. He's not going particularly quick. So he is not going to be dodging this. And then on top of it. Well. He's also not paying any attention. So down he goes. And then the A10 comes in. And I need to go for him right now. Mirage is leaving us alone. F5C is far enough away. But this A10. I'm going to pre-flare. And he dodges. Which is perfect for us. Because I'm just going to commit. We dodge him. We take both his wingtips off. And he is surely but surely. Going to find the ground. Harry finally goes down. He's taken like two or three of my teammates. Because I missed him or didn't kill him. But luckily we actually get something out of it in the end. So after chasing the F5C for a little bit. He's engaging one of my teammates. And I'm hoping he's going to start dogfighting. Mirage breaks off. And he's just going to go for one of the Ash 25 So I'm thinking, should I go and help out with the Mirage? But then I notice it's 2v1. Mirage is going rather slow. So for now, it looks like a good target, a good moment to do it. But he's going head on. He's probably not going to turn. And I noticed that guy from earlier as well. And I knew he was playing very, very safe. So he's probably not really going to fly into us. And there he goes. He actually turns away and runs away. So it's a good thing I turned around again for the F5. And I want to get to this guy before he actually kills him. But the SU-25 is so dead set on running to the airfield that I can't help him out. Because of course he's being outrun by a faster plane. And he's so focused on flying straight right at the airfield that he stops looking around and eats an IM-9E. A little bit embarrassing considering how many flares you got. So now we are going head on with the F5. There's another SU-25 next to me. And this means that he has to choose one of us. Luckily, he's a little bit in front, so he's going to go for him first. And it makes it so that we can start pulling in and start pulling lead right on him. 
He dodges the, the shot. And then I need to full send it. Because if I don't, I am going to die. He runs away for a little bit. I'm going to see if I can get a long range shot in. Very close, but he dodges. And now I just want to make sure that I bank up enough speed. And I want this guy to engage us now. Because I do not want to deal with this guy once that Mirage shows up. But here comes SU-25 number 3. So I'm going to keep this F5 straight for a little bit. And the second he starts turning, I'm going to be turning after him. And we are going to turn this into a 1v1. I'm making him pick his target. He could have easily gone after me. Because that other SU-25 would have never have caught him. But he now probably thinks that I'm going RTB. And that means that I can turn around. He notices us last second. We shoot in the head on. We miss. I'm going to go up and over. I'm going relatively straight up here. Because I want to know which side he's going to. And he's going towards my friendly. He takes my friendly down. He puts him into a flat spin. But because we maintain energy so well. We still have enough energy here to just go for him. We just next here a little bit. We set him on fire. And he starts hugging a tree. And that's skill number four. So we go and land. And the reason I'm going to keep a very large portion of this takeoff run is because of this. I'm looking around. I know the Mirage is somewhere. He was already landed by the time I was on the runway. He was already taking off. So I know he is somewhere in the middle, maybe even on our side of the map. So I want to make sure there he is. That's the first time I see him. And the reason I'm flaring right now is because he has the Chonk missile. It's the R530, I believe, the normal one, the big one. The big one in the middle of the Mirages. And he has, if he has the IR one, he could have just top down me. So I cut my throttle, I drop some flares, and then I start chasing him. I know that he's pretty passive. I'll power to him, he's in a mirage, I understand. But I need to make it so that I kind of catch him off guard. If I don't, he's just going to be running away, and all I can do is pray for head-ons. And if he actually goes up, and then comes back down and starts on my 6, it's over. There is nothing I can do. If I struggle with a Milan on my 6... You bet your ass I'm going to struggle with a Mirage with Magix on my 6. Not amazing. And because this thing accelerates so well, I'm just going to be running on like 80% throttle. I'm going to be climbing very slightly. Just to make it so that he can't run me out of fuel in the long run. Well, he can, but it's going to make it a little bit harder. I notice that he's diving in. So I'm instantly going to come from the blind spot. And he hoped that he's going to try to dogfight the SU-25. Because if he's diving right now and he's actually only looking at the SU-25... He will not be seeing me. Right now he's already slowing down substantially. So at this point I gun the throttle. And I'm going to try to close this gap as quickly as possible. Prepping missiles just in case. I'm just going to be shooting it off in case he actually sees and dodges us. Missile doesn't even pull in. Luckily my nose does. And down he goes. On to the next target. And who is that you might ask. And that's a Jaguar somewhere on the map. Great play by the SU-25. He stalled the Mirage out. And then we were able to just kill him real easily. Guy never knew what hit him. And this Jaguar. I was actually looking forward to a dogfight. I primed the missile just in case. But. It's such a shame man. But that's 6 kills. I'll show you the rewards at the end of the next game. Because I forgot to show you in this one. So again on the cold map has been a little bit of a trend in this thing. So I'm not sure how bad the overread is. And I'm running min fuel because 20 minutes. You're not going to be surviving 20 minutes with 20 minutes of fuel. It's like 18 minutes, something like that. Just take min. It's efficient enough. You don't have an afterburner. And on top of that, your acceleration is so good that if you get a little bit of altitude in, you can just bank on 70% throttle. And you already use less up there. So you're going to use even less with less throttle. So 7 or 8 minutes, whatever it is, is plenty. Trust me. And again, looking around. You really need to pick your targets. And I see this A10... And I need to kill him. A10s, bane of your existence. Keep looking at the A5, F4C just in case he pulls in. I'm waiting for the A10 to start engaging the guys coming head on with. And then he starts pitching up. We are completely safe to now engage him. Brrrt indeed. And down he goes. You don't want to take on A10s. Especially with other people around. You need to kill them in the head on. If you don't, they will 180 you. They will instantly get the guns on. You need to dodge them. You need to run away. And if you need to run away from them... Well, you're not going to be flying the A9 else. Um, I've done it a few times. I've dodged them a few times. But in general, you don't want to mess with it. Just kill them in the head-on. If you don't, a 90% chance you are dead. I'm not telling you you can survive it. But I'm also not going to tell you that you will survive it very often. F5 behind us. He's like 1v4 over there. So I'm not really worried. I notice his Harrier. 
He's busy engaging an SU-7. And if he's going for the SU-7 on the side of the map. He's probably very kill hungry. So I'm not going to shoot the missile yet. I'm going to wait for the Harrier to pass the SU-7. You know why? Yeah. Because you don't team kill people that way. Very often people shoot a missile at you. And then say why did you fly in front of the missile? No why did you fire the missile? Wait for your teammate to be in the clear. And then you can fire it. And just like that. The SU-7 would have probably taken the missile otherwise. Since he's a much hotter target. The F-Force 5C is still alive somehow. So instead we are going to go head on with him. Luckily he's the equivalent of a paid actor. And he's going to just go straight vertical right in front of us. So we shoot once. We shoot twice. And down goes the F-5C. Here are the rewards if you care about such a thing. But you shouldn't buy it anyway. And then Moscow is the previous one. Which was a 6 kill which netted me 53,000. Thank you all for watching. I will upload another one tomorrow. Stay tuned till then. And I'll see you in the next one.